Hi everyone, so for today we're going to be looking at two objectives, formation of new compounds from chemical reactions and writing simple word equation for these reactions. So let's see word equation. So a word equation is a short way to show that a reaction is taking place and in a word equation there's three components. There's the left hand side, there's an arrow and there's a the right hand side. So let's see this. So you have here the left hand side of the arrow and here the right hand side of the arrow. What is shown on the left hand side? You have the reactants that come together. So there is a reaction taking place. So let's see the reaction between hydrogen and water, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen and oxygen are on the left hand side because they are the reactants. They come together and product is the product is water. So water is on the right hand side. And right. So the word equation is this. This is the word equation. And in a word equation, you have a plus sign. The plus sign means that they are reacting together. And the arrow means that once the reaction is over, this is what you're going to get. Now, you always need to use an arrow. Do not use the equal to sign that would be wrong. So if you're trying to write a word equation and you're writing it like this, that's wrong because you have a an equal to sign here. This is a mathematical uh, expression, which is actually wrong. And here we're not writing an, a mathematical expression. Here we're showing that a chemical reaction is taking place. So this is absolutely wrong to use an equal to sign. If you're typing, you will have to use so two dash signs, two dashes that will become like this, and the arrow sign like that. So that would be my arrow if I am typing. Now, if I'm writing and I find that I don't have space to write the product, let's say if you're writing in your copybook, so hydrogen plus oxygen, arrow, I don't have space to write water. So if I write the water here, it's wrong because here you're mixing the left hand side and the right hand side. So always the left hand side of the arrow, so that's the arrow here, left hand, uh, the left hand side of the arrow should be for the reactants and the right hand side of the arrow should be for the products. So which means that what I'm writing here is wrong. So I would need to write it like that. In this equation, I have respected the left hand side and the right hand side. So right hand side of the arrow, uh, left hand side of the arrow, sorry, I have the reactants. And right hand side of the arrow, I have the product. So this one is good, this is wrong, and this is also wrong. So this is the correct way of writing a word equation. Now let's see chemical reactions. Now when there is a chemical reactions, there is temperature change. So temperature will go up or will go down. There is new substances that are produced and the substances are going to be very different from the starting material and the change cannot be reversed. So you cannot go back. So once you have hydrogen and oxygen that react to form water, it is very hard to go back to the uh, reactants. There are ways that you can do it, but it's very hard. It's not something that you can do easily. Just like if you have salt mixing with water. Salt and water, there is no reaction between them. It's just a mixture. So you can evaporate the water easily, put it in the sun, you'll get back the salt. But if you have water, it's a very complex process to get back hydrogen and oxygen. So examples of chemical that we chemical reactions that we will see. So these are the four reactions that we'll see. Let's start with the formation of water. So the equation is hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. So I'll write the word equation. So you see these are the reactants and this is the product. So that's the word equation. The second reaction um, 
is metal reacting with sulfur to form the metal sulfate. So any metal, remember from the periodic table, all these in green here are metal, right? So all these are metals. So any metal over here in the green box will react with the element sulfur to form metal sulfate. So for example, calcium, so you see calcium is over here. Calcium will react with the element sulfur to form the metal sulfate. So metal sulfate, because the metal is calcium, the metal sulfate will be calcium sulfate. And the word equation is just going to be calcium plus sulfur, arrow calcium sulfate. So let me write this. So this is how my word equation looks like when it's typed. The second example, so I have aluminium reacting with something to form aluminium sulfate. Because we have a sulfate which is formed, so you need to react it with sulfur. So then I fill in the blanks and my word equation will be aluminium plus sulfur, arrow aluminium sulfate. So you can now fill in the blanks and write word equation for all these reactions. So this video is going to show the reaction of sulfur, which is a yellow powder, and iron, which is a grey powder. So we're taking both of them and we are here we are mixing them. Here there is no reaction taking place. We're just mixing them together. And we're going to start the reaction by applying heat to it. So we're heating a glass rod here. This glass rod will be applied to the mixture. So that's the mixture of, of sulfur and iron. And to that we are applying the heat. And you see that there is very bright flame and the mixture glows. So now a reaction is taking place. Now you can talk about a chemical reaction. So here iron and sulfur are reacting to form iron sulfate. And here iron sulfate is a black solid. So you see that black solid, which is very hard and is kind of rock like so now a reaction has taken place heat was evolved a new product was formed and the new product is very different from the initial reaction reactants sorry let's move on to the third reaction which is metals reacting with chlorine to form metal chloride so here same thing is going to apply that all these metals in green here from the periodic table can react with chlorine to form the metal chloride. So calcium react with chlorine to form calcium chloride. Be careful, here it is chlorine, here it is chloride. Same thing as to here. Here it's sulfur, here it's sulfate. It's kind of like before the reaction, these are single people, and after the reaction, they are kind of married. So there is a bond between them and there's one of them who is going to change their name. So the chlorine, uh, you can see the chlorine is going to change its name and become a chloride once it's married so that we know that they are a couple. So calcium chloride because they are married now, but chlorine because chlorine is a single element. So not yet married. So word equation will be calcium plus chlorine giving calcium chloride. Okay. And second one, what will react with chlorine to form magnesium chloride? So the metal has to be magnesium. And the word equation will be magnesium plus chlorine giving magnesium chloride. So I, I don't have space so that's why i'm writing it like that but if you have space of course you'll have space in the google doc make sure you write the equation on a single line now you are going to fill in the blanks of these four reactions now let me show you a video for this reaction 
So in this flask over here, you have chlorine gas. And to chlorine gas, we are going to add iron. So iron is going to be in the form of an iron wool. So the iron wool has already been heated so that it can start the reaction. So the heat is going to begin the reaction. So iron wool is added and is being dropped in. And as you can see, there is fumes that is being produced and you see that it catches fire. See at the bottom of the conical flask, it's catching fire and you have a red substance which is formed, very different from iron, very different from chlorine. So here you have a solution of iron chloride which is formed. So we started with chlorine which was a gas and iron wool which was a solid. So you end up with iron chloride which is now a liquid. Right. So... You've also had the uh, formation, the involvement of heat. So it is a chemical reaction and you have a product formed. So now let's move on to the last reaction, which is metal plus oxygen giving metal oxide. Now, when we're saying reacting with oxygen, the oxygen is from oxygen from the air. Right, so... When it reacts with oxygen from the air, it's going to form the metal oxide. So again, we're going to use any metal from the periodic table. Any one from here. So let's start with calcium. Calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide. So you see that from oxygen, it has become oxide oxide so it's married now to calcium so the word equation will be calcium plus oxygen arrow calcium oxide second one magnesium with to form magnesium oxide so you have an oxide which means that it's reacting with oxygen so then the word equation if i type it it would be magnesium plus oxygen arrow magnesium oxide so again you're going to fill in the blank for all these uh, equations now let me show you the reaction now when you're reacting a metal to oxygen so oxygen is in the air so you'll need kind of something to start the reaction so the fire because fire is going to involve when you're burning it involves oxygen so we're going to burn the metal in fire so that it reacts with the oxygen in air here we're using magnesium ribbon and see how initially it was a solid ribbon that was being held by the metal tongs and as it's reacting, so it catches fire, very bright flame, so you know reaction is taking place. And now it's not a ribbon anymore, it's a powder and it's going to break. So you can see we started with a grey metal, we end up with a white powder. So this is magnesium oxide.